Watercolour checker card. Now, what on earth is one of those? It's this, that's all it simply is. The problem I find when I'm working with watercolours, for example, is that sometimes the half pans I use, or in this case, the watercolour pencils I use, are not always the same colour when you're applying to the paper. Not quite, are they? Depending on how much water you use will make a difference to the way it looks. And that would just give me some general idea on what the colour would look like before I apply it to that watercolour surface. Right, let's make a start, and let me show you how to make one of these watercolour checker cards. As you can see, I've already drawn out the main grids for all the 36 colours which I've got here. And I'm just writing down all the way along here for the colours. I suggest you do everything in pencil first of all. This is a mechanical pencil. It's a 2H lead and it's a 0.5 kind of width lead as well, which is that one there, okay, a Faber-Castell one. I will provide the grid for you as well. We can trace down onto the paper. Now, the reason why I'm writing everything out in pencil, because knowing me, I put a miss one out somewhere, and I've missed a colour somewhere, and I've, I've got all the way to the end, I think, oh, I've got one spare. Oh, I've missed one. And it could be that one up there, you know, and you've got to erase everything again, and then just rewrite them all back in. If I'd have done that in my permanent marker pen, or my waterproof pen, and that's a Pitt Artist Pen Fine Liner, small, as you can see on the end there, quite a nice one to work with. And this is a waterproof pen, which means I can put, obviously, paint over the top of that, and this pen won't blur. If I did all this using that pen first of all, and I got near the end, I've missed one out, I'd start the entire thing all over again. And also some of the colours in here have got very, very long names. I mean, for example, I've got one here which is um, Earth Green Yellowish. Pardon? Earth Green Yellowish. I know, of all colours. So I've had to kind of squeeze that in there somewhere. I can't where it was. Well, there it is there, but. So I'm going to carry on writing these down in pencil. And once I've got them in position, then I go over the top again with my kind of waterproof pen. At least that way you can get them central as well, more or less central, can't you? It depends how neat you want to be with this, to be honest with you. So remember to have a look at the link within the description of this video so you can download my reference lines here. And this is for first six colours, but don't forget, you can use this for as many colours as you want. You don't have to use every single cell within there. You can add more to it if you want to, so you can just duplicate it as you work your way down the page if you've got more colours than I have here. Now, as long as you do this lightly as well, don't press too hard on the paper, then you can erase this. Once you've got your waterproof pen on, and written over the top of that, just erase any pencil marks you've got on the paper there. I've got one or two still down the side here as well, from when I did the outline. Yeah, something like that. Okay, and then all you need to do is write them in. Here we go. Right. White. That's an easy one, isn't it? White. Okay, make sure you put your top back on your pen. And then I can remove all of the pencil marks within the writing, and also any pencil marks left over from the boxes as well. Once that's done, we can make a start of adding the colours into those little boxes. Yeah, you might want to put a title there, I was just saying that. Yeah, why not? Now, we'll start off with white, but the only thing with white is white paper, isn't it? And to have a white pencil stand out on white paper is going to be a bit of a no-no, really, isn't it? It's not going to work, is it? No. But this is basically what it is, look. I'll just put it onto here so you can just see what I'm doing. So let's put some white onto this uh, bit of testing paper. Kind of scrap paintings, which we've just put to one side. I always cut them up and make use of that as well. Get the brush, we'll wet on one side like that, the cleanest side, and then bring the water into the paint like so. So it will take us out. So that's what we'll do with all the colours apart from the white, of course. White is, well, white, isn't it? So, let's start off on the next one then. This is going to be that other one, the cream. So what I'm going to do is start off on the left-hand side by really pressing down on the pencil, indenting the paper to a certain degree, which is something you don't do normally when you're doing a painting. Not in the early stages anyway. Then ease off that pressure as you work your way along. Go over the top again, like that. Then ease off it. Light, 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 that's it, that's it, that'll do. Then we'll grab a damp brush, make sure there's not too much water on that, a little bit of kitchen roll there, and start on the cleanest side first of all, or the side with hardly any pigment on, and work your way across, like that. And that's it. I know, and that's the cream on there. If you wanted to, you can actually get your cream colour, whilst it's wet there, look, and a little bit more into that as well. Like so, to really kind of make it stand out that little bit more on that wet paper. Okay, so really intense. Keep going over the same area a few times like that to begin with. And then remember, ease off that pressure as you work your way along. 
keeping with inside that box, of course. So I'm hardly touching the paper at this end there. On my way back, now increase the pressure a little more so around there. That'll do. So wet on the right hand side, the lightest side first of all. Then bring that water towards the darkest side or the richest side in this case. The reason why I do it that way round is because if I start here and work your way along, that will drag that rich colour all the way along, won't it? Just keep going and going and going. So start off with the lightest end first of all to get that sort of gradated feel to that colour. The best paper I find that I can use for this technique is a cold press paper. So this is a £140 cold press and this one is Bockingford, a paper which I use for many, many of my paintings. I do like the surface on here. It's not cotton paper. But it's just quite a nice paper to work with. It's like a, a chemical pulp, really. Okay, one more time. Damp, clean brush, not soaking wet. Start with the lightest end first of all again, and gradually work that brush across. Picking up that pigment as you go along. Look at that, not lovely. These are nice pigments, you know, these um, Faber Castell ones. They seem to blend really well on the paper. From what I understand, but not from experience though, some of the cheaper watercolour pencils don't blend that well and they leave a lot of grain and texture behind. But look how smooth that blend is for this. Really smooth. Yeah, I quite like that. Okay, let's just do a few more now. It's a little bit of music. Just for you, of course. You can see the colours on the pencils are not quite the same as the colours on the paper. So it's worth making one of these colour checker charts. Try saying that when you've had a few. It's worth making one of these colour checker charts <laughs> when you're working with those pencils because at least then you can compare that to the Evans photograph and work out the right colours that you'll need for that particular painting. And that's how I tend to work all the time in general watercolours anyway. Do a lot of testing first of all with the colours that you've got before you make a start on that painting. But that's why, as I say, having one of these colour checker charts, it's well worth having to one side, which you can quickly refer to if you ever need to as well. You know, there are other methods as well which you can use instead of a colour checker chart. <laughs> so quite a mouthful that, isn't it? It really is. Um, other methods you can use, and the one in question which I also use, which I've made myself, are some little colour slips, really, which I've made. Give me a minute, let me just tidy this up a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, that'll do. Oh, hang on, miss the corner. It's not that neat, we could do. And all they simply are, are these colour strips here. These are my main watercolours, not watercolour pencils. But you can do the same thing, like I've done here on the paper, but some watercolour strips like this. And by doing that sort of idea, is that you can actually see the gradients of a colour. So when you look at this, for example, the Scarlet Lake here, look how it goes from rich all the way to a nice pale light colour, very similar to this deep scarlet red. See that? But that's a good way of doing it, so you've got a quick instant check, and something you can just fold up again afterwards. Now I do have a little video here in YouTube on how to make one of these as well. 
So it's well worth just referring to that one, but also I'll pop a little link down in the description below. So well worth thinking about that for another option as well. Not to call the checker charts, but call the checker strips. Have you noticed something that's wrong on here? Apart from my spello, which is down here for the greenish, there's one other thing which I've not done on purpose, but I should say I've done it on purpose, but no, I haven't. Another misspell. Pardon? I know, another misspell. I do very often misspell things, been a little bit dyslexic, I'm not surprised. So what I've done, if you look towards my cadmium yellow here, I've also got a second cadmium yellow there. Ooh. Okay, basically what I've gone and done there, that should be called cadmium orange. So I need to change that wording on the end. And we can do that in, again, more than one way. You can't erase that permanent pen. Of course not. It's a waterproof pen. So what I need to do is cover that pen up. So you can either use correction fluid or you can use liquid paper or some form of liquid paper. And there is one produced by Daniel Smith, and that's Daniel Smith's Watercolor Ground. And I'll show you how to use that, I think, just on that little area there. When you apply it, you need to leave it to dry for probably 24 hours at least. Then you can either paint over the top of that if you wanted to, or write over the top of it. Uh, okay, but it's not a problem, as I said. We don't have problems here, do we? No, 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 no. Now, as I mentioned, is that you don't want to go too heavy by really scrubbing hard and indenting that paper with watercolour pencils. Not initially, anyway. The reason why I say not initially, because normally, like with normal watercolours, you work in layers as you go along, won't you? So all the different layers, and every layer is going to be light. So you're using the side of the pencil on very, very light, tentative marks as well for the first few layers. When you get to the top layer, like I'm painting this cat's eye, as you can see here, then you can afford to be a little bit heavier with that pencil. Now this to me looks more like a warm black, which it is, isn't it? I mean, look at this black colour here. It's quite nice. I'm not trying to be too neat on the edges here. I don't need to be, really. It's a bit of fun, really, isn't it? Now then, before we go, one last thing we've got to do. I'm going to show you how I'm going to repair the word yellow, which, as we know, it should be cadmium orange, okay? So I'll grab an old brush. It's one of my old size door zero brushes. This is very, very old. I use them a lot for my detail work. And this is the product in question. As you can see, Daniel Smith's watercolour ground. And the idea behind this is that what you'll do, you take the top of plant that up, Look at that, I know, look at that stuff. It's not liquid paper, that's what I call it anyway. And you can paint this on just about any surface, just about, not all. And the idea is, this will dry like watercolour paper. So I can paint it over the word yellow, might need a couple of layers of it, we'll see. Let it dry, as I said, for 24 hours before you try to paint or draw over it. And already, 
That's nearly made it invisible, not quite, but nearly. Now if you do like this video, please click on the like down below and also don't forget that subscribe button as well. At least that way around, when I produce a new video here for you on YouTube, you shouldn't miss it. It's not necessarily going to be exactly the same colour as your watercolour paper because we know watercolour papers do vary in colour, just that little bit they do. So you can get the really bright watercolour paper, can't you? Put a little bit more over the top of that and I think that will do. I'm really piling it on thick, aren't I? If you wanted to paint something like a canvas or ceramics or even something like um, like glass, you can use this watercolour ground for that as well. I know, unusual stuff. This is a smooth version, there is a more rougher textured version than this. So just bear that in mind if you look for this. So what I'll do, I'll pop a little link down below for you to this Daniel Smith's watercolour ground, okay. It's an affiliate link, but it won't cost you any more money if you want to buy it. Just kind of helps me out as a channel, that's all it simply does. So check this stuff out because it's really interesting to use. Also, when you're looking at your tin of colours here, look, you want to make sure, look at that lovely array of colours, isn't it? You want to make sure that your colour checker charts whoop, ding, will fit with inside your tin. Okay, so in this case it will. So just worth bearing that in mind. You don't always have to have it inside the tin, but it's quite a handy place for you to leave it and keep it. So you can just quickly refer to that colour chart. Now, I do have a product review video about these Faber-Castell Abrec Duro watercolour pencils, 36 tin, there you go. So what I'll do, I'll pop a little link to the top right hand corner for you, okay? Just give us some ideas what these pencils are all about. Not the cheapest to buy, but then again we also know that the cheapest pencils is not always the best option.